Hi, in this video, I'll show you how to make it a little bit easier to share Power Query files using the relative folder paths. So what does that mean? I have an open Excel book here, and maybe I want to reference this text file. This is just a text file with first name, last name, emails, gender. And if I bring back my workbook, my Excel file folder here, let's say I want to bring that into Power Query. So I'll go to Data, and go to Text and CSV, and I've browsed for that folder already. You can see that the folder is on my C drive. And I click OK to bring it into Power Query. I'm not going to do any transformation into it. I'm just going to load it in and load it in as a connection. So I go load. And by default, in my particular configuration, it's loaded as a connection. If I want to open it in the Query Editor, you can see that it is here. Let's change it a little bit. I may want to put this in as a table here. So I'll right click on this, go to load to, and let's just make it as a table here in this sheet. We'll put it in cell F1, click OK. We have our table here, right? So no, no transformation is done. Let's say I close this file and I save it into folder one. I'll save it in folder one where my name.txt file is, save it. And let's minimize this. You can see that it's saved here. Let's say I send this file to somebody else and they put it in a different folder. So we'll kind of simulate that, right? And they put it on a different folder. They're in folder two. Oh, I need to close this. Let's close this. All right. And let's move it over to folder two and open it. And we'll simulate that we sent this file to somebody else. Click enable content. Let's see what happens when I renew it. It says I can't find it because it's looking for it in folder one. So this is simulating a situation where you may send this file to somebody else and the query is not going to work. So what we can do is we can adjust this query so no matter where it gets sent, as long as you have this particular file and the source file, the text file, it will look for that particular file in that folder. So what we need to do is we need to create some parameters. So I need to create a parameter that is going to look at the current folder path of where that file is. I'll just call it, make a small table, a one column table. I'll call it folder path. And the function I'm going to use is called cell. Equal cell, open parentheses, and file name. Double click that, close parentheses. And you'll see that it's given me the folder path of where this file is, book one. All I need to do is I need that folder path, users, desktop folder two. I don't need all the way up to that bracket. The opening bracket is telling me the name of the sheet. So to find that, I would need to use a find function equal find, not quote find, find open parentheses. I want to find that bracket, that left bracket. Whoops. I want to find the left bracket. You have to enclose in quotes, comma, within this text. That's that full path that it gave me earlier. And it's going to tell me what number of characters it found it in. That is the 32nd character. Now we're going to wrap that into another function called left. So, and it's going to find in this text, which I'm just going to bring back. I wanted to bring back the file name again and close parentheses and the number of characters, right? Comma, the number of characters. And this is where that find gives me that number of characters. So if I finish that, it will give me the number of characters all the way up to that bracket. All right? So you can see it gave me that bracket. I don't want that. So I'm just going to do minus one. Minus one, close parentheses, press enter. So I have my folder path now. Turn this into a table. Let's double click this. Turn this into a table. Control T to turn it into a table. My table does have headers. Click OK. And I'll call this uh, folder path. I'm going to bring this into Power Query as a connection. So go to data from table and range. We will call this folder path. It brought it in that table name. And all I need to do is just drill down for that value. So right click, drill down. And all I want is that value. Click home, click close and load. This is going to be a connection only path. All right, so I have connection only. So all I want to do is create a connection. Now, with that in mind now, I want to put that name into my source here, into my 
into my M code here. So it didn't find that name because it's looking in folder one. And right now I'm in folder two. As you can see, I'm in folder two. So what we can do is go into the source, or I can just go into advanced editor and change that. I want that reference for the file contents. I want to change that to the name of the query that I gave earlier called folder path. But I also want to include the name of the source data, that text file. So I have to put that in quotes, names.txt, and that's in quotes. Click done, and that refresh that. We have the file come back. Let me get rid of these generic columns by using the first row's headers. Under home, we can click use first row's headers here, and click close and load, and you can see it's changed it here. Well, let's see if this works. Let's pretend we move that names text file to folder one. So let's bring up this names text file to folder one and see if we can break this. All right, let me go back into the sheet here. Let's refresh this. And yes, it got broke because that names that text file got moved. So I'm going to close this and move it into folder one. You can see we're in folder two here. It's referencing that. Click save. Let's move this book into folder two. We'll, we just simulated, maybe we sent this off to somebody and they're in a different folder. Double click to open that. And you can see here that we are in folder one now. If we we'll click enable contents and query into connections. And let's see if we can see that work. And we, the reason why it doesn't work here in this case, we get this dreaded formula.firewall error. And that's because of a privacy setting. If we do have the option to change that, uh, we can go to get data, go to query options, and under there, go to privacy and always ignore privacy level settings. So click OK. We can refresh that and that error will disappear. Now that's if the options is available to us to change the privacy settings. If we don't have that option to change it, I have another video to show how we can get around that later on. But this will cover if we have that option to change our privacy settings. So double click here. You can see that it has gone through the steps successfully, even though I'm on a different folder and we simulated that. So let's say we change something here we call, we say, oh, I just want the uh, people with edu, contains uh, edu.edu, just those folks. All right, click OK. We only have about 21 rows. Click close and load. And we're down here. Again, if I just want to move this to something else, I go move this to folder two. I go to names, move that to folder two. We can see that it's going to break again. If I click refresh, it will break again. And all I need to do is save this, move this over to folder two, open it again, and simulate the movement of the file to different folders. Uh, that would be the same as moving it to, giving it to somebody else and they're moving it around. You can see here it's moving it to folder two. If I go to data and go to queries and connections, you see that it did not complete. Refresh that and you can see that now it's going to be successful. So that's the way that we can share Power Query files that have references to a outside source. And if we wanted to share this and change the relative file path, and it makes it a little bit easier to share Power Query files. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.